Thank you so much for staying tuned to MBC ITV. You're watching The Know How and I'm your host, Zakari. Now, did you know that you can actually generate electricity from water? Now, today I'm super excited to be taking you behind the scenes. As you can see, we are at the Kamburu power plant. We're going to take you behind the scenes of the generation of power through, through hydroelectric power. So stay tuned. Let's learn this together. I'm an engineer, Elijah Kibadi. Here we are at uh, Kabul Power Station, which is the one of the seven Fox Power Stations in, uh, in Eastern Hydro for Kenjin Power Company. Give us a brief history on where you started from as Kabul Power Station. Uh, Kabul Power Station was uh, commissioned between 1974 and 1976. Initially, they put up two units. They just go to a place how the water was installed uh, three now. units. Each of that 1.4 megawatts, giving a, a total of uh, 94.2 megawatts. Uh, that that was a uh, substation. Yeah, that's when it was commissioned. Mm -hmm. And it was the second power station to be done on the Tana River Cascade. The first one was Kidaruma, uh, commissioned in 1968. Uh, the third one was uh, Getaro, commissioned in 1978. Uh, then Matsinga, commissioned in 1981. And finally, Kiambere, which was commissioned in 1987. Okay. Yes. So basically, take us through what happens at Kamburu Power Station. Kamburu Power Station is a hydro power station. Mm -hmm. We generate power using uh, water. Uh, this, the, we have a, a storage, a small storage of, uh, let's say, not small, a medium storage of 150 million cubic meters of water. That's uh, what we have uh, as the dam storage. Uh, but we rely for our main storage on Masinga. Masinga Dam, where the main storage for the Seven Fox Power Station is. Uh, the dam is, uh, holds uh, 1.56 billion cubic meters of water, that is at Masinga. And it's a cascade because uh, the, th the, the five stations sort of support one another. When the water leaves Masinga, it comes to Kabulu, where it generates power, then goes to Kidaruma, uh, to Gitaro, sorry, where it generates power, then Kidaruma, and after that it goes to Kiambere. Uh, and what is the, the capacity of Kabul Power Station? Kabul Power Station is three machines of that 1.4 megawatts each, giving a total of 94.2. Uh, yes, and, uh, and uh, a head of uh, a gross head of 82 meters. Among the seven, Fox Station is the largest of them, and which one produces more capacity? In terms of uh, installed machines, the biggest is uh, Gitaro. Gitaro has three units two of 72.5 megawatts, and a third one of 80 megawatts, giving a total of 225 megawatts. Kiabere has two units, each of uh, 84 megawatts, giving a total of 168. Masinga has two units, each of uh, 20 megawatts, giving a total of 40 megawatts. Uh, Kidaruma has three units, each of 24 megawatts, giving a total of 72 megawatts. So in terms of uh, the size of the station, it's Kitaro, but uh, Kiabere, produces more because it has um, a bigger head. Uh, okay. And how normally do you deal with issues maybe of water levels going down? How do you deal with it? Uh, we have a section that is uh, mandated in the water management. who we'll look at the inflows, what is coming in, and uh, they work out what we need to release uh, from the rivers to meet our obligations. Under the PP arrangement between Kenya and Kenya Power, we also ha have a minimum generation that we have to give them. Eh? But uh, there is the minimum, but the maximum depends on uh, the inflows. So when the inflows are very good, we can do a lot more power. Yes. Okay. And with the current drought that we're seeing in the country, has it affected your plant in any way? It has affected us in the sense that we have uh, scaled down uh, the hydropower generation and the. Uh, Probably out there, people have seen uh, an effect on uh, on the fu fuel charge. It has increased slightly, like, just like the carbon sector said recently. Right? Because when you reduce the hydro uh, slightly, then you increase the thermal, thermal generation, which relies on uh, fuel. Yes. Are there backup plants maybe that can is coming up with? Uh, in cases of drought, in cases of. Uh, um, uh, what we deal here is management of the water because we need to manage it well. Eh? In terms of uh, high inflows, we make sure that we maximize on hydro. In terms of low inflows or drought like now, we manage that water so that um, you still continue having the mix 
uh, of hydro, thermal, and geothermal yeah, for the country. Because you need all those, all, all those modes. And for the stability of the system also, you need, let's say, some hydros to be in the system at any one time. Okay. Mm. I will remote to take our viewers to the exact model of your power plant. Maybe yes. you can take us through with this short model of what you have before we take them to the actual thing. Yes, yes. Uh, the blue, the blue color represents the water. Here maybe I can start with this one. This is our spillway. Eh? Our spillway is there to take care of uh, floods. Eh? When you have too much inflows, then uh, we can release. Because this dam has a full, have uh, a maximum level we should have. We normally call it the food supply level. For here it is 1,006.5 meters. We use the sea level as the datum. So that's the food supply level for Kabulu. At that point, we have uh, the storage of 150 million cubic meters of water held in, uh, in the dam. So if we have more, and we have more inflows, then uh, we release that water through the spillway. Normally here we get uh, our, our inflows from Masinga, but we also have substantial inflows during the heavy rainfall period from uh, Thibali uh, that uh, passes through Kerenyaga and uh, Embu. So whatever is surplus, we can release through this, uh, this spillway. The spillway can release a lot of water. We can actually release uh, something like 4,500 4, cubic meters of water per second. So this design is such a way that even, even uh, a one in a thousand year flood will still be able to manage yeah, the, the spillway. That, uh, the spillway yeah. is gated, is uh, gated, the uh, spillway is, is gated, not, uh, you know so you open. They, we call them radio, radio gates. There are different kinds of spillways. Some are like, free, free flowing, like what you have in Masinga and Kiambere, where it's a slab, and they, when the water goes above that slab, it just overflows. But ours is gated. We have to open the gates when that travel is reached. Are there instances where you've had when the water is too massive that you, you can't control it? Are there moments like that? No, no. Even during the El Nino um, of uh, 1998, we comfortably were able to manage it. Wow. Yes. That is nice. Uh -huh. uh, then here we have the intake. We call it the intake because that's where the water goes. It gets into the plant. From, uh, from the dam, that's where the water gets into the plant. It gets into one tunnel. We have one, we call it a penstock. It is a, it's, it's one penstock. It lands for about uh, 160 meters to the powerhouse. And also there's, there's a substantial drop. Uh, so to the powerhouse, it separates into three. You can see it is separating into three penstocks to support the three units. So the, when the water passes through the three machines, it then combines again and goes through one tail list. This still is 2.9 kilometers long, and it will put, take the water to Getalo Dam. From here, it actually goes into Getalo Dam. And you can see some uh, other tunnels here. This tunnel here is the, access, is the access tunnel to the powerhouse. You can drive in. It's one 550 meters long. Eh? You can actually drive into the powerhouse. And that's where we take in the heavy equipment. During the construction, there are some heavy equipment here, some in excess of 120 tons. So you drive them in through, the, through that tunnel. This tunnel, we call it the surge tunnel. You can see it has a bed of water because it's supposed to take care of, uh, when the machine is running, you always have water normally plays aloud. It has charges, eh? uh, it, it moves up and down. So this one is to relieve those pressures because we don't want the water to be uh, going, working against the, the, the machines. So this one is for relieving those, uh, those uh, surges. Even uh, if you have a, maybe an abrupt operation, let's say the machine was running, it stops, you have the water flowing that way, all of a sudden there is no water pushing it, it will try to come back. So that's for relieving those kind of uh, uh, stresses, water stresses. Maybe you can uh, take us through exactly what happens here at the power plant. Here, here is where now the water comes, it runs, we have a turbine, oh, I'll show you one yeah. uh, we have nearby here. It, it is actually a water wheel, it's basically a water wheel. So the water will uh, rotate that wheel. And when you, the water rotates that wheel, that wheel is, is connected to the lotter of the generator. The generator has uh, two parts. You have the lotter that rotates inside, and then you have uh, the stator, which is a network of cables allowed it, eh? the one that, where the electricity is generated. So the, the, the water will turn the lotter of the generator, and that's how the generator will uh, generate electricity. So when the electricity is generated, we generate at 11 kV. It is uh, the cables land up this service shaft. This is, we have a service shaft. 
you can actually access the powerhouse through, from here, through a lift uh, for about 70, 80 meters. Eh? So the cables run along the service shaft and then they go to the substation, uh, what you have here. They pass through the transformers. The transformers step it up from the 11 kV we are generating at to 130 kV, 132 kV. That's the transmission voltage. Yeah? Uh, and the, the three units actually come into this, they bring all the apply into the substation uh, where it is stepped up and then we, we, it's transmitted by Kenya Power. Yeah, this is, uh, we call it unit one. The cables coming from the powerhouse uh, come up through here. They pass through some other structures. Then they, main, they pass through the transformer where the power is stepped up from uh, 11 kV, 11,000 volts, to 2,000 volts. Then it goes to the bus bar. It happens for the three units. And uh, in this substation also, you have one line coming from Masinga at 2,000 uh, volts. Two lines coming from Gitalo, one line coming from uh, Kidaluma. And uh, we, then you have two lines at 220, at, at 1,000 2, volts going to another substation owned by Kenya Power nearby. You also have one line from here to Melo at 1,000 volts, a transmission line towards the Melo region. This is our media control center eh? for the Sven Fox power stations. And we also can uh, monitor and operate tackle from here. So from this, uh, from this uh, control center, we can uh, operate and uh, monitor the operations in the five, four, five stations in Seven Fox and also Tuckwell. And if you can take a picture of uh, what you have there on the screen, you can see we have uh, all the five stations. That is, uh, there's Gitalo, Kaburu, Masinga, Kiambele, Kidaluma and then Tuckwell. So from here you can actually see how the machines are operating. If you see a lead box, uh, it means that machine is running. Hmm? If you the the pink, that's because the, the link is down. We are not the link is uh, at the at the at the maintenance. Eh? Yes, uh, and the others are on uh, standby. Yes. This is quite representative of uh, the dam, the power station, these two buildings, the control building where we are now, the substation. The spillway as it goes uh, down. This is the old course of the river. You can see the dam wall. Ma the major dam wall was done across the old course of the river. This is the old course of the river, and it's also the boundary between Mashakos and the uh, Embu counties. So it it uh, connects together here with the uh, with the spillway and continues down into. You can see that one as the uh, Gitaro Dam. Eh? If you see like a cut recess, that that cut recess cut area, it represents the tailless tunnel which I said is 2.9 kilometers long. We start from here, come straight, then bed that way, and exit there to Gitaro Dam. 